In this video, we'll be looking at a past paper question for statistics or data handling grade 10 and group data. This is part one. Let's go. So this question says 19 girls were required to complete a puzzle as quickly as possible and their times in seconds were recorded and shown in the table below. Here are the times. You can see that this is ungrouped data. They haven't grouped it into categories or intervals or classes. They've simply listed the data. And what's quite nice about this is that it seems like they have listed the data in ascending order. So from smallest to biggest. 1.1 says identify the median time taken by the girls to complete the puzzle. Now remember median, that's the middle, median, middle. And it's good that they've listed it for us already in ascending order because if they didn't, you have to list it in ascending order in order to calculate median. By the way, I've linked the paper down below in the description box. If you want to click on it, try it with me and then mark yourself as you go along. That'll be an awesome way to practice. Now there's different ways to determine the median time, but remember median is middle. So one way that we can do it is a cross out method. And then I'm gonna show you another way as well. So what I mean by the cross out method is we start on either end of the data set and we cross out. So I'm gonna go two at a time just cause it's faster. So start on the left side, one, two, start on the right side, one, two. And we're making our way towards the middle to see which data point is in the middle. Let's do another two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You can go a bit quicker by doing multiple. Now watch here. Now we go one, one, and the one in the middle is this one. That means that the median time taken by the girls is 19 seconds. Now remember the median, so this is the median, also known as Q2, that divides the data set into a lower half of the data set and the upper half of the data set, which we'll get to later. There's another way that we can determine median, and remember to find the position of the median, we can use the following, where n is the total number of data points. So it's half in how many data points do I have in total? Well, they said there were 19 girls, so 19 total data points. 19 plus one is 20. So basically a half of 20 is 10. Now what that means is that in the 10th position, please don't get confused. This formula is to help me find the position of the median, not the median itself. So to find the position, they tell me that the median will be in the 10th position. So if you start with the data set, how it looked in the beginning, then we know this is the first position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth position. So again, our median comes to this value over here, which is 19. Our next question wants the lower and upper quartiles for the data. So the lower quartile or Q1, the upper quartile or Q3. And remember, I just mentioned that when we find the median, what that does is it breaks our data set up into the lower and upper end of the data set. So before the median, because the median is now part of our data set, 19 is our median, it is a part of our data set. It means that it divides the data set into this portion over here. Okay, not including the median because it's part of the data set. This is the lower portion of the data set. And from the lower portion of the data set, we will find Q1 or the lower quartile. Okay, lower quartile. Then it divides it into this part of the data set as well, which is the upper part of the data set or yeah, the upper part. And from this, we will find Q3 or the upper quartile. So to find the lower quartile, we basically do the same method that we did to find the median, but we're only working with the lower part of my data set. So we're going to start, I'm going to cross off two at a time. So two here, then two from this end, two here, two from this end. Just be careful when you get to the end. 17 is in the middle. This is my lower quartile. There we go. Then we do the same, but for the upper end of the data set. So we're going to go one, 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 until we eventually get to 22, which is Q3, the upper quartile. We would like a box and whisker diagram to now represent the data. And remember, the box and whisker is based on the five number summary, which includes the minimum, the maximum, Q2 or the median, and Q1 and Q3. Those five numbers. So for this data set, the minimum is 14, the maximum is 29. And remember, we found the median, Q2, 19. We found Q1, we found Q3. 
and it's these five numbers that we will transfer onto the box and whisker diagram. Now remember, when you draw a box and whisker diagram, you need a scale at the bottom. I made my scale go up in units of one, but that's definitely not necessary. I could have done 12, 14, 16, and so on, which the memo did, I'll show you in a second, but I just went up in units of one. And then how we do it, remember, is your minimum is 14. You represent that with a dot, okay? Then your maximus, maximum is 29. You also represent that with a dot, right? So we did minimum, we did maximum. Then Q1, Q2, and Q3, you represent with a vertical line. So Q1 is 17. I'm going to do it like that. Q2 is 19. And then Q3 is 22. So that is over there. Then remember, you complete your box by joining up these lines and you're going to use a ruler. So it looks a lot neater than mine. There's your box and then you connect your whiskers. OK, I'm not using a ruler, but you will be and it'll look much better than mine. OK, there we go. Then what I would prefer you to do, um, it'll help your teacher out as well, is just to write over here that your minimum is 14. I know that you've drawn your scale and hopefully you've drawn it neatly, but this just helps in case your scale looks a little bit weird. Your teacher can see that you know where Q1 is. This is Q1. This is 17. And then this is Q2, 19, Q3, 22. And then again, your max of 29. Also, please make use of a ruler. So that's what my box and whisker looks like. This is what the one in the memo looks like. It looks very similar. They've gone up in units of two, basically. But I would prefer you to do your scale a lot neater. So 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So write all of that. And then instead of writing here 17, it makes much more sense to go Q1 is 17. So instead of putting it there, put it there. Same thing here. Q2 is 19, just so you can show your marker or your teacher exactly where your quartiles are and your min and your max. The next question is giving you the five number summary of time in seconds taken by 19 boys to complete the same puzzle. So remember the five number summary will be minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3 and max. First question, calculate the interquartile range and you should know that the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So that would be my Q3 minus Q1. And that is seven. There we go. The next question is a little bit of a tricky one. You need to really understand what your different quartiles mean. You need to understand a little bit about percentiles and the, the ranges and the box and whisker diagram. It says, if only one boy took 19 seconds to complete the puzzle, what percentage of boys took at least 19 seconds to complete the puzzle? So when they say at least 19 seconds, they mean 19 seconds or more. Now, in order to answer this question, you need to realize that we, we don't have the full set of data. We just have the five number summary. We basically just have the box and whisker that we can picture in our mind. So what you must remember about the five number summary and our quartiles is that this is the median over here. Okay, that means that from here to here represents 50% of the data. From here to here represents the other 50% of the data. Also, remember that our quartiles do exactly that. They divide the data into quarters. So from the minimum to Q1, that is 25% of the data. From the Q1 over here to Q2, that's another 25% of the data. And then, of course, from Q2, the median, to Q3 over here. That is another 25% of the data. And then finally, from Q3 to the max, that's my last 25% of the data. So they're saying what percentage of boys took at least 19 seconds to complete the puzzle. And they told us that there's one boy that took 19 seconds. So this over here, that represents one, one data point, one boy. And this from the boys who comp who took 15 seconds to 19 seconds, that is 25% of the data set. So the boys who took at least 19 seconds or more, that represents not 25, not 50, but 75% of the data. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So basically, three quarters of the data lies here above 19 seconds and a quarter of the data lies below 19 seconds.
So your answer then for this question is 75%. 75% of the boys took at least 19 seconds. Our last question over here says, in which group, the girls or the boys, did a larger number of learners complete the puzzle in less than 23 seconds? Justify your answer. So again, we're going to look at the five number summary or the box and whisker for the boys versus the girls. So if you look at the box and whisker or the five number summary for the girls, you will recall that Q3 was 22. So the question says, which group? Girls or boys did a larger number of learners complete the puzzle in less than 23 seconds. So we need to look at where 23 is, which is more or less over here. And as you can see, that represents more than 75% of the girls took less than 23 seconds. Remember, from here to here is 25%, another 25%, another 25%, so from your minimum to Q3 represents 75% of the data. And 23 seconds is over here. So more than 75% of girls took less than 23 seconds. Okay, so that's girls. Let's look at boys. So here's the little a box and whisker plot. I think it's easier to see when you can visualize it like this, but you can also look at your five number summary. You know that 23 seconds, and the question is referring to 23 seconds, is the median which means that this is 50% of the data sets. So about 50% of the data sets, but definitely not more than 75% of boys took 23 seconds or less to complete the puzzle. So if you compare this, girls versus boys, you will see that 75%, more than 75% of girls took less than 23 seconds. That's three quarters of the girls took less than 23 seconds. But for the boys, only about half of them, only about half, can't be more than 75, only about half took less than 23 seconds. So the girls actually, a larger number of girls completed the puzzle in less than 23 seconds. There's your conclusion. So I know it's only two marks, but it's a good thing to make a statement about girls based on the number of learners or the percentage of learners. Make a statement based on boys and then give your conclusion. And here's the memo's answer in case you want that, but it's basically the same as my one. In other videos in this playlist, we look at group data and more past paper questions. I hope to see you there. Bye, everyone.